All right, welcome to eBay Scavengers. I'm Mikey, and this week Ryan and I are going to talk about shipping. Hey, Ryan. Hey, shipping. Yes, <laughs> shipping nerds. <laughs> so, in my house, I print all the labels, and I know you, Ryan, you print and pack. Is that right? Yep, yes, that is very true. I pack everything and I print all the labels. Now, how did you end up doing all the packing, too? I felt I mean, surprised. <laughs> Um, you know what? It's kind of funny because I've always been kind of like a post office nerd, like ever since I was a little kid. Um, because my mom ran a mail order business. Like she, she, I think she talked about this on the email list because she sells on eBay too. Um, she used to make rubber stamps and sell them at craft shows, like arts and craft shows. Hmm. And she had this like massive mailing list of people and like I was in charge of the mailing list on like our little Apple IIe computer um, and we would ship stuff out and I was like obsessed with like mailing stuff to people. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I love mailing stuff to people. <laughs> so that kind of feeds into my like obsessiveness about that. <laughs> wow. So in those days, were you able to print postage in any form or does everything have to go through the post office? And they mm. would do no, it? it was everything. Everything went to the post office, but we would like, we controlled our mailing list on the Apple IIe and also we would print labels. Like you could print like the address labels uh -huh. on the dot matrix printer. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah. So that's cool. So, um, so your partner, Jay, does he do more of the listing on eBay than you or is, how does this balance out? Yeah. It's funny that you asked that because, um, for a long time he was writing listings and I, he would write the listings and then send them over to me and I would list them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he finally was like, I hate writing listings. It's so tedious. It's so boring. I just want to take photographs of stuff. <laughs> so he, yeah. So he, he takes photographs and what we do is we have these like notebooks, um, these like steno notebooks um, where we like write down the folder it goes in and the number and like, um, the, the title and all the measurements. So that's how we do that. That's how we split it up basically. Hmm. Okay. So how do you, how do you guys split it up? So, so I know you guys both list like different items. Um, but Wendy packs everything. Yeah. So Wendy and I, when we, we list stuff, usually I list the really easy stuff, like with that model number or a brand and it's easy to mm. kind of figure out what it's worth. Wendy will list gotcha. the more abstract items that are like, not that well documented and we'll both mm. sit down with garage sale and Tara peak and kind of list away. I usually list during movies and stuff. Like I can kind of list and watch a movie if it's like a, a teen vampire film or something. Like it's not that distracting. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching teen vampires. We did last night, but not that I, <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> only because they're easy to list to. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the reason. Yep. And then, yep. And, and then, you know, as orders come in during the teen vampire movie, we'll um, ignore them until the next morning. And um, mm -hmm. she'll she'll pack them up, and I'll print the label and affix it. <laughs> so she's doing the hard work, but it actually uh -huh. takes us about the same time. If she if she's packing not too complicated mm. items, it takes me just about as long to print the label and get it on the item. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I I honestly do not mind packing. Like, I mean, the big stuff like we've been talking about, like lamps and typewriters and just like crazy stuff like that. Like I kind of hate. Yeah. Um, because you know, and it's not so much the the physical act of doing it. Like, like I I don't like shipping it. Whatever. It, it's it's more like the fear of it getting broken. Like, is this good enough? You yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it's stressful in a way. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so while you're I don't, listing, I don't mind doing it. Do you? Um, how do you guess the weights while you're listing items? Well, we, on our notebooks, I mean, we weigh every item. We have a digital scale that ho does up to 400 pounds. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so you just plop it on the scale. And so what I do is I estimate for packing materials, depending on what it is. You know, if it's a silk tie, well, obviously, you know, a silk tie is going to weigh, like, almost nothing. So yeah, you don't really have to weigh that. But, like, yeah, exactly. It, like, is two ounces, if not one. But, um. But yeah, like a pair of shoes, a pair of boots, 
you're like, is this three pounds or five pounds? Just stick it on the scale. Like, write down what it is. Estimate for the box. A box is usually one pound. Mm -hmm. Brings it up by one pound. Um, so that's just how I estimate it. Um, and it depends on how fragile and weird shaped it is and how much, you know, handling mm -hmm. you have to put mm -hmm. on it. If you're getting it professionally packed, that's like a whole other, you know, thing we can talk about. But mm -hmm. well, so I don't guess. I mean, I just weigh it. Well, I have scales too. We have two pocket scales that are like up to 15 pounds mm -hmm. and I weigh it. And I do okay. like you, you, I'll round it up to the next pound if, if it's going to go priority, but usually most of the stuff we ship right. is first class. So it's, mm -hmm. it's more about just adding a few ounces for the bag. Um, right. And, um, I was going to ask you, what are you, some of your favorite packing materials that you use? Like just all the time, oh, your yeah. go-to materials. Yep. Poly mailers. Oh yeah. Poly mailers. Oh my God. And you know, what's so crazy. I literally, this is like the fifth year in a row that I've been selling on eBay, like pretty hardcore. Mm -hmm. And I just bought poly mailers. Like I've been using those Tyvek mailers from the post office, the, the, um, the priority, priority ones. mail Tyvek. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been using those forever, but they're, sometimes they're not big enough or sometimes they're too big and I want to use it for first class and whatever. So mm -hmm. finally I was like, this is crazy. Like I am, I am being way too thrifty and not, you know, I'm like, I don't want to buy poly mailers, you know, <laughs> but finally I just went on eBay and I looked for the seller with the, you know, the cheapest poly mailers that looked like good quality. And I just bought like five different sizes mm -hmm. and it, they are great. Like I love them so much. I'm just like, stick it in a poly mailer. It's a jacket. It's a blanket. I don't care. Put it yep. in a poly mailer. I, I'm you know? totally with you, Ryan. Because uh, we we yeah. did the same. We started actually buying the poly mailers just like you through eBay because of your recommendation. Uh, we had been buying yeah. them through Uline, but their shipping is pretty harsh. So if you're not buying a lot of stuff, yeah. they're not great. So so we still buy some stuff through Uline, but um, I'm totally on the poly mailer. And I have to say, I actually use quite a bit of the packing materials also from the um, the post office. Not just their boxes, but their yes. mailers. I like their. Uh, bubble wrap mailers are pretty great. Padded flat rate. Padded flat rate. Yeah, six bucks. It's like anywhere in the U.S. Those are great. Oh, my God. And what's so crazy is that is new. Like within the last year, like you guys started selling, I think, last year. Yeah, last so, April. We're one year now. Yeah. Yeah. So it was one year. Um, and they didn't have those before that. Which was crazy. Like once they have padded flat rate, I'm like, whoa, I, I can stick a pair of shoes in there, like a pair of women's shoes in there. Easy, you know, to California <laughs> for me, cause yep. I'm on the East coast. That's yep. great. Yep. Especially actually, for my I customers. I love the small too. flat rate box too. I actually use that quite a bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Small flat rate. Small flat rate is awesome for overseas too. Yeah. If you can stick it in there and it's priority and you get full tracking and you can put insurance on it. Yep. Thank God. You yeah, know, like I use those a lot just for that purpose. Great. And the only kicker with those is in the last two months, the shipping jumped from like $17 mm -hmm. to everywhere, anywhere in the world to $24. But still, to have yes. tracking. And, you know, there's something different yeah. with small flat rate where if if you were to go into the post office and ship international with a small flat rate, they give you a very small form to fill out um, oh. versus the medium and large uh, you know, pr uh, right. flat rate box or anything priority international. Usually they give you several page form with the carbon copies and right. all this crap, but it's different for small flat rate. It's actually easier. Not that you would ever want to go into a post office and fill out forms, but right. No, don't do that. <laughs> Unless you're sending priority to a weird country that they don't support right now, which is like Russia. Yeah. You know, I still do all my priority to Russia. I just do it through stamps.com. So it's unfortunate. I can't print through other places, but yeah, Okay, wait, so stamps.com, just on a side note, so stamps.com will let you print USPS Priority International to Russia? Yes. Really? Yep, I actually use them pretty regularly for the, to Russia and to um, other other blocked countries. That's kind of a new thing that there's yeah. all these blocked countries now uh, for priority. That's, that's crazy. I did not know that um, because, yeah, it really does suck when you're like, I have to go to the post office and handwrite this crazy address in Russian and yeah. hope it gets You know what? There, After you know? one trip to the post office, I think the uh, the $15 <laughs> a month stamps.com fee would have broke even with yeah. your time there. 
Yeah. Although, honestly, like, uh, people in Russia, they're just like, send it first class. I don't care. And it gets there. It. I've never, ever had – I've sold a ton of stuff to Russia in the last few years. Never had anything get lost. Amazing. I've had good experiences shipping to Russia, too, but I have to say it can be slow. I've had some things get hung up for yeah. the six- to nine-week run, which is, like, pretty painful for mm-hmm. the customers. So. So it, yeah. it gets there, yeah. but it can take a while. Yeah, so the, so definitely anyone thinking about, like, getting USPS boxes, mm-hmm. that is, like, a majority of what I ship out of. You know, pol- I use poly mailers for first class and for parcel post, uh-huh. or parcel select it's called now. Um, yep. But, yeah, the, the priority mailboxes, the shoe boxes, the medium flat rate, the regional box A, like... I'm all about those boxes. Like yeah. I could not, I could not run my business without those. You know. I love the regional A. It's like a nice size for yeah. lots of sweaters and stuff, and it's cheap. Yep. For a flat rate, it can yep. it can really help you on the rates. And I have to say, you yep. know, what we use a lot is the seven seven seven. You know, what I'm saying that it's by weight priority yep. box. Yep. That's another. Kind so wait, so so um seven. It's like a seven by seven by seven cube, and it's yes. it's a flat rate. It's not a flat rate. It's a by weight. Oh, but it's a convenient size for a lot of things. Yes, I love that box, and I also love the twelve by twelve by eight. Do you ever use that one? Is that a flat rate or is that a by weight? No, it's no, it's just by weight. Huh? I don't think I've used that one before. A twelve twelve eight. That sounds well. You see, like you said, you 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 do mostly small stuff, so Mm -hmm. you know. 12 by 12 by 8 is like a big puffy jacket. You know, like I stuff a big jacket in there. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. No, usually when I have kind of odd shaped items that are usually jackets are relatively light unless they're like a heavy leather one. I'll, I'll use just a, right. just do a, uh, an old Amazon box or something else I get from behind the, a, a store in town. Just ordinary yeah. cardboard. So now here's a question also, like a long, like you said this and I do this too. I go to Walmart when they're like restocking the deli or the candy section and I get a ton of boxes from there. Um, But the reason for that would be because you want to send something parcel post or international first class. You know, it doesn't have to be a priority box. Yeah, and I find I also just need cardboard around in general to hack up into little pieces and secure. I often wrap little items that are going first class in cardboard just to help them get there. Um, yeah. So, so we have a, a constant need for cardboard, and so we'll save anything that we're buying online. We'll keep that around, and um, yeah, we go to Alco, which is like a, a discount Target. It's like all the returns from Target mm. go to Alco, and they put these <laughs> Alcos yeah. are in small towns that can't really afford a Target. So I go to Alco, and every uh, uh, every Tuesday, the recycle guy that comes to pick up the boxes. So I have to get there before Tuesday morning, and I can have my pick oh, of boxes. Yeah. So we just went today yeah. and did our, our haul. Yeah, we yeah Walmart, like, if I know that they're restocking the deli or the candy section, because those are, like, the candy section is, like, small boxes, and the deli is, like, kind of big boxes, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but the problem is, like, <laughs> you have to break them all down and organize them so your office or whatever is not a complete pigsty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I- I totally understand that. I think about a third, maybe 25% of our storage space for eBay related items is just packing materials. And that's pretty well organized boxes. Like I can quickly get in and find the box I need. Um, And I'm not even doing the packing. Usually it's usually it's windy, but um, you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a significant space, you know, to, to have one of every type of, or not one, but you know, to have every type of box that the post office offers and, to keep yep. them all on hand. But the thing is, you you <laughs> you have to have them because if you're doing if you're a top rated seller and you need to ship, you know, tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, I I ship at night because uh, mm-hmm. my post office person comes in the morning. So, um, you know, you have to have that box. You can't be like, oh, I gotta head over to Walmart. <laughs> like, right. You yeah, know, it takes them. two weeks for the post office to give you your boxes that you oh, order yeah. from them. It, it, so. it takes a long time to get them. <laughs> um, yep. So do you, do you ever use UPS or FedEx or does everything go through the post office for you? I would say, you know, 99% goes through the post office unless someone says, and we had this question on the email list the other day, unless someone says, hey, I have a FedEx number mm-hmm. and I need this overnight, 
because for me in a rural area, many of us on the list, including you and me, live in a rural area. Mm -hmm. There, the FedEx place, you know, where you have to go in and fill out the form and put the number for the customer number in, they're an hour away. Oh wow! So, yeah. So, so I have to make a day of it to yeah. like go in and like, unless I mean, unless I'm doing my research wrong and not finding the right place in the small town that I live in, but I haven't found anyone. So, hmm. so usually if they're like, I need it by Friday, I need it FedEx. I'm like, all right, it's Monday. I'm sending it priority. It's going to get there by Wednesday. Right. You know, that <laughs> makes down. sense. Now I think you, what you can do, Ryan, is if FedEx is still coming and making deliveries in your town, you can schedule a pickup with them. Have you done that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad about that stuff. Like, you know, there's FedEx and UPS that come through our neighborhood every day, mm -hmm. but I just like, I don't want to sign up for an account online. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. I'm just like, I send USPS. That's right. what I do. I got you. I feel the same way. I don't want to deal with the rest. What I actually have to do is, um, meet the FedEx person at like their blue drop box in town at their pickup time. And it, it's ridiculous. It's, we, we don't have yeah. anything nearby to do it through. It just gets crazy. You know, you're like, okay, uh, it depends on, honestly, like it really depends on how much the person is spending on the item. Like we had someone buy like a $200 lamp and it was, I think we talked about this. It was actually uh, the set designer for Mad Men. Oh, wow. So she was like, I need this tomorrow and I need it FedExed overnight and I have a customer number. I was like, yep, I'm packing it right now. We're driving to FedEx. You know, wow. like, of course. You just jumped in the I'm car. Like... All right. Yeah, I have the yeah. same kind of relationship with another set designer too where we sell them t uh, uh, clip-on ties. <laughs> and, uh, yep, and, nice. Uh, yeah, they're the same way. They're like, I need six clip-on ties now. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. Do you know, is it for a particular show or they just have a production company uh, was, or something? Well, she works for different Hollywood films, but um, the, I was sending mm. the ties to Hi Hollywood and then they were filming their last movie, which was called like the News Anchor or something, a new comedy. Um, it has all these news anchors working for CN CNN in Atlanta. And so I was sending the, the ties oh there for the last round. So I think it's called <laughs> The Anchorman 2. I love that. The Anchorman 2 is the new movie, yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's really Anchorman two. Yeah. Are, are you are you are you saying it like that because you don't know that movie? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I, I kind of just barely. It's Will Ferrell and all that. Like I, I saw yeah. it once. Oh, that's such a classic movie, and and people are obsessed that they're making a second one. So the fact that you have sent clip on ties to Anchorman two is amazing. I think if you look at the poster <laughs> for that movie too, it shows them all with their like thrift store vintage shoes, like the wingtips and the ties, <laughs> like these huge fat ties, yep. and they're all lined up. Yes. So it's kind of like they're like eBay models. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's so funny because I'll watch shows. I mean, I'll definitely watch shows and movies and I'm like, yep, they totally could have bought that from us. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I sell that. So, um, I think yeah. that Jay has mentioned before that you guys use some custom packers on the hard stuff. And how do you decide when yes. to, to do that? So, okay. <laughs> There's a couple different ways. So if I buy something like I bought a couple like really big pieces of artwork, like paintings, that are profession they're already professionally framed and matted. Mm -hmm. So that's a value to someone. You know, they're like, oh, it's already framed and matted. I'll just hang it up in my house. Like I don't have to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that stuff costs a lot of money if I mean, as an artist, you know, you know that when you're like, I want to frame a piece of my artwork and they're like, that's five hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever, you know? Yeah. So so I like to try to keep that stuff intact. Um so I'll get that packed because I mean I, I want to charge a higher price for that and I'll just put the handling charge on it. You know, it's a $30 handling charge because that's how much it costs for me to get it packed. Um, depending on the item. But, um, but the good thing is with artwork, uh, most people are willing to pay that because they know it's not going to break by the time they, it gets to them, you know? Mm. Um, the other, the other way that I determine that I want to get it professionally packed is if I look at the item and think, I do not want to, I do not want to pack that. That's going to take me forever. I don't know if I have the right materials or, or a box that's as big, you know? Right. Um, and I'll just be like, fine, I'm just going to go drive and have it, have it packed. And I might lose a, a, a little bit of money or maybe I already had a handling charge on it, you know? 
Now, do you have a packer within an hour of you? Do you can you do that locally, or is that you got to go out of town? Yeah, so um, the Packer is the same place as the FedEx place, so mm -hmm. it's it's about an hour away. But the good thing is, honestly, like the town that we go to that has it, I mean, our schedule is so flexible that we're like, let's just go up there and make an afternoon of it. We'll go to the thrift stores, you know, we'll go, uh, there's a Lowe's up there where you can buy stuff, like if you're redoing a house or whatever, and we always mm -hmm. need stuff up there. So we're, we like make a day of it. I see. I see. That's nice. So... so. Um, I think we've kind of exhausted some of the packing materials and getting stuff packed, but I, yeah. I feel like um, we could go into tape a little bit because <laughs> I go through so much freaking <laughs> tape. <laughs> yep. So, so how do you? So what's your source of of like the cheapest but the but a good quality packing tape? I'm okay. curious. Well, I'm in a transition right now between different types of tape. So we've been buying our tape in 36 <laughs> packs from Uline. And um, okay. at that rate, it was like kind of like a buck a roll for 55-yard rolls of tape. Is it yard or feet? I forget okay. what they measured in. It's weird. Yeah, I forget how they do it. Yards, they do like 55 yards. Yeah, yeah. so we had been buying 55-yard rolls for like a buck each, and they were, they were 1.8 mil. And that's a pretty thin yeah. tape. You know, it's not. It's nice for packing, yeah. and it works, and it's sticky, but it was still a little thin. I like it a little thicker. So I just noticed that if I go to 2 mil, it's not much more for the 110 yard through U-line. And um, it's mm. actually cheaper per per yard. And uh, and that's a, that's a nice industrial thickness. At the 2 mil, you really feel like it's a heavier tape. And um, I just switched to that because it's actually less expensive than what I had been using. So so it is a buck a roll, and that does not include shipping from Uline, or or that's it's a dollar sixty nine for a hundred and ten yard roll of the two mil. Oh, so that is cheaper. Yeah, and that's a pretty good price because I think even you're into the, the duck brand, right? Is that your thing? Yeah, I get that only because I can get it locally for yeah. It's <clears throat> how much is it? It's less than a dollar a roll because you get a pack of four for three forty. Uh huh. And those are 55 so, yards, yeah. right? Yeah, they're 55 yards, and they are, you know, 1.8 mil. So right. it's not the thicker kind. But honestly, like, I've been able to pack the craziest boxes with that, and it's fine. And the great thing is when I run out, if I'm like, oh, my God, I have one roll left, I just go to Walmart and buy them out. Right. You know, now, I'm just like. Now, I was at, I, I looked at Walmart recently because you turned me on to the Duck brand. I wanted to try it. And I used it, and it felt pretty similar, the 1.8 yeah. mil it was like a dollar roll individually yeah. too. It wasn't, it wasn't even bad on the individual price, but I saw their, their bulk pricing right. where they're selling packs of eight or something. It was, it was kind of oddly expensive for the amount. Is, is that, was I doing the math wrong? I thought, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen the pack of eight. I've only seen the pack of four. Mm. So I'd have to check that out. My mom recently, like, I don't know if she like went on this like buying binge of like packing tape. Like she bought too much and I had sent her some stuff. Uh, some labels that I wasn't using, so she sent me like a ton of packing tape for free. <laughs> so wow. I've been use I've been going through that, which is nice. Right. I'm but, gonna um, send you a roll of the two mil to try because I think you're gonna really like the extra thickness. And uh, yeah, you should send it to me because I might be converted. Yeah, I might convert. You can handle you that's a, honestly like <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the it's funny to talk about this, but it is an important aspect like that like. The, the the things that are important are your packing materials, your tape, and, like, your printer toner. Like, if you don't have those things, you're totally screwed. You're right. And, <laughs> you know, you know, backups of those things. Wendy and I had one tape gun for a while, and it was driving us crazy because I needed a tape gun to yeah. put the labels on, and she needed one to close the boxes up. And it was just like, yeah. we need a second tape gun. Like, why are we torturing yep. ourselves? <laughs> yep. Well, it's so funny because I do all the packing, and I have three tape guns. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've just acquired them at thrift. Anytime I see them at a thrift store, I'm like, tape gun. <laughs> you know, Take I didn't it. put this in our Get outline it. today, but I um, I have a pair of scissors I'm really into. And I think I've mentioned to you before, but they're a pair from Fiskars that separate. Yeah. So you can separate the blade and have a oh. knife and all these different type of cutting tools with it. And they're like, they're like $8 scissors online or something. But what a great thing to have sharp scissors that can be other tools for you. Yeah, the the knife is really important, actually, because if you're making custom cardboard, like cutting custom cardboard, mm -hmm. you have to score it. Mm -hmm. Like it's easier to score it and bend it and then cut it, you yeah. know, so that having that as a knife is, is actually, I should check that out because, 
Yeah, I just have like thrift store, like scissors, you know, steel thrift store shears that we find. I have like 10, 20 pairs of them just like everywhere. Right. But that's important stuff. So, well, let, let's talk. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to move on to labels because I know you've you've tried some other labels, yeah. but I think we both end up just doing paper labels with tape right now. Is that right? No, I I use the labels. Um, so I started I for years, four years. I did just on regular paper. You know, it, I have an um, a laser. I think we both have the same laser printer, the same brother mm-hmm. laser printer. Yeah. Um, I just use regular paper because it's the cheapest and the laser toner is the cheapest and tape. But the problem is you use so much tape taping on labels and, and really like on nights when I'm like, I have 15 things to pack and it's going to take me an extra, like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, just taping labels on. I couldn't stand it. It was driving me insane. Mm -hmm. So I, so I bought a thermal printer, like one of those like industrial thermal printers. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this and it does not work with the Mac. You cannot get it to work with the Mac unless you pay for a service. So what do you do? Which I am not willing to do. So I, I, uh, buy these labels on eBay. If you, if you look on eBay for, it's like PayPal, eBay shipping labels. They're just paper labels that are in the shape of like the, the thermal label. Basically it's the half sheet. Mm-hmm. And I just print them on there. They're just like, and then I just stick them on and they're fine. They don't require any extra tape. They're, they're a huge time saver. Like, I love it. So, um, is it expensive to buy the labels? It's not, oh God, I think it, it works out cause it's free shipping. If you find the right um, person to buy it from, you just get like a thousand of them for free shipping. I think it works out to like, like three cents a label. Hmm. Okay, and does it um when usually when I print a shipping label, like half the page isn't used. Um so does it right. you just throw away the other half that's sticky? Like there's no No, no, it's it's two it's two labels. Oh okay. so there's it's like specifically for eBay, like there's two labels on a half a page and it's ac- actually perforated in the middle. Oh. So if you use one half you can like take the other half off and just use the other half. Huh. Okay. And so that just So it's actually it's actually like it's like 1 cent it, that that would be like 1 cent a label then. Okay. Actually. Wow. Okay. Maybe I'll I'll switch yeah. now. I'm ready to get off of these too. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just such a time. I mean it depends, you know, if you have like 10 15 things to ship a night, you're or in the morning, you're like, "Oh god, I do not want to tape labels on that like I used to cut them, <laughs> I used to cut them in half and like cut them all neatly because I hated it when they looked all messy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, oh, that I got was the, like insanity. <laughs> yeah, I keep a paper cutter yeah, right by go. my printer well, and hack them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, so you use something I was going to talk about too because um, I used to use an inkjet printer, mm-hmm. and I mean inkjet printers are you know for bulk are ridiculous because you're like I'm out of ink again. You know, like you're always out of black ink. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the, so, the ink yeah. doesn't. Um, I mean, it's worth more in value. It's worth more per ounce than gold in terms of what it's sold for. So. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. So I just use. I I think I got my idea from you. Is you have that brother, just that simple brother laser printer that just like lasts forever. <laughs> but you now you refill and them and I you have kind of turn me onto that. Yeah, so if you so if you go on to YouTube and you just start like refill brother toner, like it shows you how to how to cover the sensor so it doesn't run out of toner as fast cuz you have a ton of toner and it just like runs out cuz that's how they make money is on toner. Um so you cover up the sensors and then you can buy I buy it on eBay, um the toner in a in a jar or whatever it is and you can refill the toner it's so easy i did it today actually um yeah Yeah, i just picked up a kit that you had pointed me towards on ebay to uh to refill my toner so i'm gonna start doing that i have like four or five cartridges i kind of let them queue up so that i could just refill them all at once yeah or you know make sure it works on one then fill the rest um yeah Yeah. so I, i i i am amazed always to see that people have inkjet printers it's like what's the point like you can't you can't oh it's print crazy 10, my mom my mom sells on ebay 
<laughs> yeah, my mom sells on eBay, and she is printing on a laser or whatever. Not laser, inkjet. And I'm like, oh, just get a laser printer. Like, just... <laughs> because if you're using that, you have to tape the labels because if they get wet, they just get smeared. Yep. Yeah. You know? Any moisture, it's over. So, Ryan, finally, I think we're kind of getting near the end of the show here. And I just wanted to close off with pick up yeah. or drop off for how we move packages around. Because mm -hmm. when I talk to eBears who are just getting started, they're always like going to the post office. And I made that mistake too. <laughs> I, would, I would show up at the post office and there's really, I don't think there's any need, right? There's no reason. Nope, no reason. And it's so funny because I we moved from one town to another in the same county, and we were very loyal to the last post office. Um, and they used to pick up from our old house, and I used to drive there every day. It, it, I calculated it as 25 miles round trip. Oh. And for years, we two years. Yeah, I know. It's insane. But they're like a tiny post office, and I was really dedicated, and I wanted them to get the credit for it and everything. And then finally one day, a couple months ago, I was like, we're not doing this anymore. I, yeah. It's too much time. This is insane. So I just started doing the pickup and from our front porch, and I, I love it. I could not say more about it. Like It's amazing. I'm just like, put it on the front porch. Do That's you it. have to schedule with your post office, or they just know to come and get it? Yeah, you're you're lucky that your people just like look in the places in your car. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but no, I have to schedule it. Like it's kind of annoying. I'm like I have a pickup every single day of the week and Saturday. <laughs> and I I have to schedule it or they won't look. Like if you forget to schedule, they're like, "Oh, you had a pickup." I'm like, "Yes, I have a pickup every day. I have a pickup <laughs> unless I'm traveling, you know." But I, I like you. your method. <laughs> so what we used to do is we had a full-size official post office mailbox in our front yard. So that you can put like a large yes. flat rate in that. And yeah. um, and we would fill yeah, we it. Do too. <laughs> and then I'd go to the post office with the rest of my stuff and drop it off. And, you know, that was really right. a waste of time because I'd get to the post office. There'd be a line or they'd be on break and there's people mm -hmm. waiting. Like it was just a like a tragic mess. And, of course, I'm taking like half an hour out of my day to walk around the post office and stuff. So... I eventually start yeah. putting it in the car and leaving notes for the postal employees. And I think things got really good <laughs> after this Christmas when we gave them a Christmas bonus for all the postal workers that yes. service our area. And, and now everyone's like, Oh, check the car. Sure. You know? <laughs> yep. Well, that's an interesting point. Just real quick before we end is, um, you know, many people in my neighborhood were like, Oh yeah, I left a tip and a little present for the post office person at Christmas. I was like, what? Are we really, like, is that, like, an expected? I never, I've never, I mean, I grew up in an urban area, so I'm like, I don't even know who my post office person is, you know? But, um, but yeah, so this year we were, like, we, we gave both our carriers, like, um, like, a gift card and, like, uh, a jar of honey from our beehive, and they were, like, thrilled, you yeah. know? They're, like, our best friends for life. That's all So it takes. always, <laughs> always, yeah. It's like always give your your postal carrier <laughs> gifts. <laughs> yeah. Look how much merchandise of you. yours, like the value of merchandise they're touching every day. Like it's good to have them like yep. to know their name, to have them know your name. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I want to just mention, I use the blue postal bins a lot. The ones they have set up through town for people to just drop off letters and small packages. And I love yeah. those. Um, I don't know if you guys use those at well, all. Well, that's... Well, the thing is, we're we're further outside of town limits. Like you guys are kind of like right downtown, so you can like walk to the blue bin. But we're not close enough. Like we're in a little like, you know, we're we're like three miles from town, so gotcha. we don't have any of those. But mm -hmm. but your reason for it is is cool because you said that you if you know you put your stuff out in the car, the person already came, and you're like, oh, I got three more orders, and it'd be great if they went out today. So let's go walk to the box. Yeah, that's exactly why. Is like I'll get those orders in between the morning pickup and before you know the next right. day. And it's like, why not just get these out fast? You know, the eBay the eBay buyer is going to love that. And I actually, we actually ship some stuff from yeah. our own stores, so I don't feel so rushed to get the merchandise built up and made. Um, you know, like if, if I have a, a chance to ship in the afternoon, I can work on getting stuff ready all day. So it, it sort of makes my day a little less hectic. Right. Um. Yeah. And I think partly like 
if if you look at your feedback, especially if you're like obsessive about shipping the next day or even sometimes the same day, mm -hmm. you'll see it in the feedback. People yeah. are like, I bought this and then it was here. Like I didn't even, you know, blink and it was here. Like people love it. Yeah, I'm glad. I you, love that as a buyer. You know? I'm glad you point that out because as a buyer, I feel the same way. If someone ships me something fast, I actually feel like I got to go to eBay right now and give this person positive feedback. So I actually think yep. your feedback rates go up just because it gets there so fast that people really yep. appreciate that you did that and, and show it, you know, because most items we sell, we don't yeah. get feedback for. But I think the ones that ship faster, I wish I could graph this out and prove this theory. Um, those are the people who give right. us the best feedback. Yeah, it's funny because I bought something on eBay um, the other day and they printed the label. I can see they printed the label because it's like electronic info received, you know, and there's a tracking number, but they haven't shipped it yet. This yeah. is like days ago. And I'm like, that's, that's the worst. That's cheating. You know, you're like, just, yeah, that you're like, just ship it. You know, what are right. you doing? Now I admit sometimes I'll print yeah, the label sucks. within 24 hours just to appease eBay. So it doesn't hurt my status, but, and ship, you know, ship it within yeah. like 28 hours of the order or something. But, um, I it, mean, come on, it's that's close. pretty good. Yeah. Um, so finally yeah. we should close up, but yeah. I want to close on just international versus domestic. Cause I feel like a lot of noobs yeah. get stuck on domestic. You see this constantly on eBay listings. I only ship to the U S and nowhere yep. else. Forget you, Canada, you know, yep. like... <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just funny. It's like a huge untapped market though. You're like, great. Don't sell to other countries. And I will. I mean, that's been my theory. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like sometimes countries go through a boom. Like, I felt like Australia for the last mm -hmm. 12 months was doing very well. They were buying a lot of stuff, almost inappropriately, like yep. buying things that they shouldn't be shipping across <laughs> the world. They could probably get at, at their local big right. box stores. But, you know, that was fine. They were having a really good, you know, economy, strong growing economy, I guess, due to China. And I don't know, I feel like that's actually slowed yes. down a little. I don't feel like I'm shipping nearly as much to Australia as I was, but... Um, well, the other thing about Australia, too, real quick, is we actually, for our other job, our other techie job, um, we were in Australia recently, and um, stuff in Australia is very expensive. It is so expensive. Food is so expensive. Clothes are so expensive. And I'm like, oh, for the price that they would pay for something in Australia, if they buy it from me with like best offer plus shipping, it's still cheaper for me to ship it across the world for them. Right. And they're than paying it is to buy it in a store. They're paying tariffs and VAT taxes and things like that on top right. of it too. So they're, yep. I mean, there's yep. still a lot of fees for them. But I think shipping internationally, I mean, it's one third of our business. We add it up every month and we're like, yep, that's one third. Yeah. It's exactly I, one third. We go through periods where some country is doing well and, and, and it really our our sales internationally jump. But I feel like in the last few months, it's slowed down a little. We're not shipping as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, so it, mm -hmm. but I guess I'm not even going to try to put a theory behind it. Just it, it, it wavers just like daily sales waver. So. Right, right. But it's important to do it. I think it's important to offer that because it's a lot of sales. Yeah, it is. So thank you, Ryan. That's another uh, episode of eBay Scavengers with Mikey and Ryan. And this is the shipping episode.